Hello again. This is Bill from Read the Factory Manual. I'm going to show you another Tinkercad tutorial because it's fun. I have a Matchbox number 65C class combine harvester. I think that's how you pronounce class, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But anyway, the harvester blades are all in disarray on my poor version of this combine. So we're going to draw a new harvester blade. So what I've done is I've measured them up and drew them up. Here's the picture of it. And we are going to go ahead and draw this in Tinkercad. The original harvester blades were cut in half. And then they're just pressed together. So I'm going to make my harvester blade all one piece. With the bottom of my model being one side of the blade. And then I will have another model that is just the other side of the blade. And that's where I'll stick them together and glue them together right there at the end. It'll make much more sense once we get to the end result. And the reason I'm doing that is, is because then I won't have a seam in the middle. The seam will be towards the end. And it, it'll look a lot better. Start up Tinkercad. We'll go ahead, if you're not registered with Tinkercad, go ahead and sign up. It's free to sign up for Tinkercad. Uh, you want to create a new design. Tinkercad automatically names your designs with some weird name up here. You can click up here at the top to change its name. So I'm going to change this to 65C Blade because it's a blade for a Matchbox 65C. Then I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I like to set a few things up first. First thing I like to do is to set my grid spacing to 0.25 because my smallest measurement is a 0.5 millimeter, 11.5, 30.5 for the for the heights and one head. Next thing I want to do is I want to uh, turn on orthographic mode. And that way, when I look at something it's all the same distances. In perspective mode, as things go further away from you, then they get smaller. So I want everything to be the same size. I'm going to start with a cylinder. So I'll just put my cylinder in right there. Now I need to resize the cylinder. But let's take a look at these options here in the corner first. The options we have are, I can lock it so that once I get it perfect the way I want it, I can lock it so I can't accidentally move it around. I can turn it off and on right here. I can change the number of sides. So the, the more sides, the smoother it will be when it's printed. The bevel, that's going to make it so that it has a rounded, rounded sides. I don't want that. This thing, I want to change its sizing. So to change its size, we click on the grips, and I want the grip to be one millimeter high. And I want this grip here to be 16 millimeters, and that grip to be 16 millimeters. So now I have a circle that is 16 millimeters in diameter and one millimeter high. And now I need to get my polygon. I'll put my polygon in right there. I'll get its height to be the same height, one millimeter. And I want its si its distance from flat to flat to be, it's going to be 10 millimeters flat to flat. So that's this distance here, and that's going to be 10. Now the distance from, from edge to edge is... 11 and a half millimeters. So that's edge to edge, which is here, this grip. Nope, this grip. 11.5. And then that gives me a hexagon. It's a hexagon because the number of sides right here are set to 6. Now I'll get that into place. I'm just eyeballing it for now. I'll go to the top view, then I can get it perfect. So I'll zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And I can see the grips right here. See the grips here and here? I need to get the circle so the grips are going to work too. So I'm going to get that circle moved into place. I want it about right here. So my grips are in alignment with the grids. It just makes it easier to align everything else when you do that. 
So it's about right there. Yep, I got it right there and there. If you're wrong, you can use the arrow keys and move it up and down or left to right, depending on which way you need to go. So there is that. Now we'll go back to our 3D view. And that thing, this circle, is supposed to be a solid. This polygon is supposed to be a whole. And now I'm going to select them both and group them together. There we go. So I've grouped it together. So now I have that exactly the way I want it to be. Now I'm ready to draw the blades. The blades are going to be a box. So I'll click on the box. I'll put the box in about right there. Zoom up and so I can see what I'm doing. Those, these blades are one millimeter by 11 and a half millimeters. And the height is 30.5. So it changed the height now while we're at it. There we go. And when we're going to duplicate that twice. And I'll pick on the on that. Whoop. Control Z. Pick on that. And move it into place. We'll go to top view so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Top view. If you hold your mouse down over top of the cube, you can move it around like I'm doing right here. Get it so that it's close, get on top. All right, get this. This is the rotate right here. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I want to move it down a little bit. Looks good to me. Let's put the grips on it. Yep, that grip is in line with the grid. That grip is in line with the grid. We're in good shape. We'll move this one into place and we'll rotate it. I'm moving my mouse further away from it as I rotate it. See how I move out? That allows me to get a little bit more control of the rotation. Now we'll grab this one and move it into place. Yep, I'm in line with the grid. I'm going to rotate it. Move out a little bit as I rotate. There, 30 degrees. Perfect. And now I'll take a look at it in 3D. Looks good to me. We have our fantastic blade made. What we're missing in here, though, is that centerpiece right here where the axle will go through. So we need to get that drawn. That axle area, that is a 2 millimeter inside diameter and a 4 millimeter outside diameter. So we're going to need two cylinders to make that work. What I want to do first, though, is I want to group all of these together. So I'm going to select them all and then pick group. So now they're all one piece. It's going to make it much easier to see what's going on. And then I want to make this a hole. So now it, I can see through it. And I can see through things. It's a lot easier for me as well. All right, so we'll click on this. This hole is going to, or this is the solid part of the circle. So that's a four millimeter diameter piece. I get confused with those darn grips, too, on which way to go. They seem backwards to me, but I was thinking about it. If I were to flip them around, it would be even more confusing. So it is what it is. All right, the whole thing is 30.5 millimeters high. So we'll change our height to 30.5. All right, and then I got that 4 and 4. Get that into place. I don't know if it's in the right spot to find out. It's, I can tell it's off, but to find out, we go to top. You can see what's going on. We'll zoom in. We'll click on that, and we'll just use our arrows to move it into place. And that's our first piece. So now we'll click back on this piece. We'll make it a solid again. We'll select it all, and we'll group it. So now it's grouped together. All we need now is a real hole to go through the center. So we'll do a cylinder. We'll change the cylinder size. That we said that was a two millimeter inside diameter. And the height on this 
it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to change it to like 35 millimeters. We'll get that into place. That looks perfect to me, but we'll check it in the top view. Yep, I got it right. We'll select it all and we'll group it. So now I have a piece that is ready to print. But I need the bottom piece in order to really be successful. So let's get back to the top view. And we'll select it and we'll duplicate it. We'll move it over here. We'll check our ungroup command and see how that works for us. And we'll go to that. Come on, there we go, that view. All right, we're gonna need the hole. This piece is still grouped together, so we'll ungroup it. Will it allow us to ungroup? Yes, I, oh, it does, isn't that amazing? All right, so now we will select all of these, but not the hole. So I held the shift key and hit the hole. We'll get the grip there and we'll say one millimeter. So now that's one millimeter high. And then we'll group the whole thing back together. Look at that. We have two pieces of the blade ready to go. I'm using the right button on the mouse to orbit. And I use the scroll to zoom in and out. I hold the scroll wheel down to, to pan, by the way. Look at that. Now we're ready to export this, take it into Cura, slice it, and print it. Go ahead and export this as an STL file. I want to make sure it exports everything. If you have something selected, it's going to say selected shapes. Then you'll have to click everything. So I want everything, STL. It, down, it saves it to my downloads folder. So if I go to my downloads folder, there it is. There's my 65C blade STL file. I'll go ahead and minimize this to get it out of the way. I'll minimize everything. And we'll start up Kira. All right. We're ready to slice. So we'll bring up our downloads. There it is. We'll drag and drop it in. There it is. I like to print towards the front and over top of one of the springs. Just had good luck doing that. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to change my material to PETG. PETG is more heat resistant than PLA. Here in the Las Vegas sun, PLA will melt outside and melt in a car or melt in a box if I'm going to mail this to somebody. PETG will not. PETG is also a little bit more flexible, not as brittle as PLA, and, and I think it makes a better part for Matchbox. So we're going to, let's see, what we have, this, that, and that's good. Well, that's a little fast, but we'll go ahead and keep it, and we'll check our settings. Now this, I don't need to print it with any great detail because it's all vertical stuff. If this had a little bit more detail in it, like if this was a, a driver, for example, I would want to print that in higher detail then I print, would print this. This one can print in low quality. Layer height 0.28 millimeters, just fine. Everything else is just fine. Infill, I'm gonna do a 100% on this because I want, I don't, I don't need it hollow and it's not gonna print hollow anyway, it's too small. The temperature 240, for the, for the PETG I have, 235 works good, and 70 degrees on the bed works good. But a print speed of 45 is what I like for this PETG. Uh, yeah, that's good. Bum speed. I'm going to do you at 35. So you're a little bit slower on the bottom and the top. Makes it a little bit thicker. I am going to do a retraction of 2 millimeters because I have a direct drive. If I didn't have direct drive, it would be 5 millimeters retraction really don't need to enable part cooling on this because there's no bridging involved so that's fine i can do that and all right everything looks good we're at petg i'm at 45 i got my 235 there yep looks good to me i'll go ahead and slice you 
and then print with Octoprint. I use Octoprint as my driver for my printer. So I have a little Raspberry Pi connected to my printer with a camera on it. So there is the printer. And we're going to go ahead and do a time lapse as well. So here is the time lapse of the print printing. All right, we're at the workbench now. The audio is a little bit different because it's a different microphone. So please excuse me for that. Here is the original piece. Let me zoom in a little bit closer and not be shy. This is the original piece. It pulls apart. Each piece was molded the same way and then you just, it goes together in a way it is. Now this piece, I've straightened these sides out pretty much, but it's still beat up pretty bad. That's why I, I went ahead and, and printed out a new one. You'll be able to find this printed piece, by the way, on Thingiverse. Here is the first piece that was printed, and then the second piece behind it. And we can see that when we put these together, they're about right. And it's a little bit longer, but not much. It'll be fine. And so what I need to do now is glue this piece onto here. Now I've got a good side and a bad side. So I want to make sure that my good side is on the outside. Let's, let's find out why. Because when you put it in, see how, how it looks nice on there? That's what I want. I want the good side out. Okay, glue. Well, no, before we glue that though, but first we gotta cut the red wire. Now we need to make sure that that hole is large enough for our axle. Here's our axle. It's not bad, it's a little bit too small. So I'm gonna use a 16th inch drill. Drill that out a little bit. Do this one as well while we're at it. All right, how are we now? Too bad. Slips on there pretty good. Goes in pretty good. All right. Very nice. So now we're ready to glue. Some glue on my tape there. I'm just using regular old. Gorilla super glue. Don't care if I get it in the hole because I can always drill it out again. So I'll do that. Get that nice. It's a work. And then we want the nice side out. And we'll put that in so that it's centered real good. Put it downward, and I have a half pound weight I'm going to put on top that will act as a clamp. Alright, so there we go. The next time you see this, it will be when we put it back on this great combine. Still have some work to do on here. This is it fresh from stripping. I haven't uh, wire brushed it yet. Thank you for watching Read the Factory Manual. This, uh, it's always fun to do these, these different kinds of things to show you how to make the parts using a 3D printer. 3D printer I used was a Creality Ender 3 Pro. And um, it's not a fancy one. It's a pretty cheap one. I did do some upgrades to it, of course. That's why I got that printer, because I can upgrade it. I think, the, I think the biggest, the two biggest bangs for the buck for the upgrade on that printer is the 32-bit board which makes it silent and the direct drive those those two uh, upgrades are probably what gave me the biggest bang for the dollar and 
get the prints to print real nice. Okay, if you liked the video, subscribe. If you're not, if you are subscribed, thank you. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, well then, hit that dislike button twice.